Hi, I'm Edie Taylor, and welcome to Tech Talk. This is a new series of programs by the Technology Committee dedicated to informing you about new technology and how it can enhance your daily life. Each program will have a new topic to be discussed with a local expert on that subject. We hope you find this beneficial. If you have a topic that you would like us to consider, or if you're possibly interested in joining the Technology Committee, please write to us at deartechnologyabby at gmail.com. Today's topic is lighting. I have with me Don Thompson. Welcome, Don. Thank you. Don is an engineer by, by profession. He spent almost 50 years in construction and facilities management. He has a very special interest in technology, but he describes himself as a gadget junkie. Don lives in Ulster Village, and I know you're going to enjoy hearing him talk. But please, he's not available for personal consultation. This interview is really just for information purposes. So Don, let's start talking about lighting. I see you have a number of different types of bulbs in front of you. And we see all kinds of new lighting that's advertised. Could you give us some background on the different types of bulbs and how they could help us? Sure. We started out years ago when Edison did his thing with a light bulb. He mm -hmm. came up with what is known as an incandescent light bulb. Now, the incandescent light bulb is nothing more than a wire inside there that's heated up, and when it heats up, it glows. And it creates some light. It also creates more heat than it does light, which is a downside because we really only want to pay, uh, we only want to use our electricity for light, but this makes an awful lot of heat as well. So what I want to do for the sake of our discussion, let's pretend that this is a 100-watt bulb Okay? Okay. You paying attention? I'm trying. Okay. This is a 100 watt bulb, and all of these bulbs give out the same amount of light. Okay? We're going to pretend that. Okay. So, 100 watt bulb, incandescent, old style bulb. So, the second type of bulb is this compact fluorescent bulb, and it, it works well. It saves um, about 80%, 80 watts out of 100. And it's got a couple of downsides. One is it tends to give off kind of a blue color. And secondly, there's mercury inside this, these glass tubes. So that when it's disposed of, you've got to be a little bit careful. Hmm. You should know that the lifespan of this is much, much greater than the lifespan of the old one, but not as good as the new one. Oh, wow. The latest invention is the light emitting diode or LED bulb. LED bulb, yeah. huh? What's interesting is these can actually come in various colors. I will share with you that from a technology standpoint, LED started out being red and green. And they had a terrible time. They, they knew that they used very little electricity to make a lot of light, but they couldn't make it useful. And so they worked for years trying to come up with a white LED. And once they came up with that, somebody became very wealthy. So what we have is 100 watts worth of light, Okay. 15 watts worth of power, and the thing will probably last 10 to 12 times as long as an incandescent bulb. In other words, you don't have to replace these. Pretty much once you put them in, you're done. Another interesting thing, as I found out yesterday, is that these are plastic. Wow. And so um, had they not been plastic, you would not see this one today, because I dropped it. Oh, wow. They come in different kinds of shapes. Here's a weird one. Well, why do you, what do you use that for? Same us? thing. It's just that that's somebody's idea of A good-looking light? Yeah, it's, a, it's lovely. <laughs> it's, uh, but this one's actually got kind of flexible. It's, huh. it's pretty much indestructible. One thing you do need to be aware of is that LED bulbs come in this shape. Many of us have what is known as a hi-hat 
perfect light, a hi-hat bulb, the recessed lighting in your ceiling, and they take this type of bulb. This bulb, again, has an 85% savings in electricity over the incandescent bulb. Probably more important to those of us that are becoming more adverse to climbing ladders is the fact that this will last 10 times as long. So the trip up the ladder is cut back dramatically. That's good. That's really good. And now is that plastic too? This one, yeah, I think it is. Huh. The That's last interesting. time. Oh, there is one more? There's one more. Okay. There. That's fine. Okay. Many of us have chandeliers, and the chandeliers have a tremendous number of bulbs. Okay, and many of those bulbs are 40 watt bulbs. They don't look at it because they're small. Right. Okay. They have now come out with a LED chandelier light bulb. And you can put these in. They are dimmable, and they are hard to tell the difference between the LED bulb and the incandescent bulb. Hmm. The savings in electricity is dramatic. And for many of us that have dimmers, on our chandelier and notice that when your lights have been on for a while you, that your dimmer is actually warm you can feel the warmth yes in the dimmer. yes because you're using only 15 percent of the electricity the heat is not there so it's much safer oh that's good now you know don i get that we all should be probably switching to these led lights to save energy but I keep hearing that people can control their lights automatically or even remotely with a smartphone or even voice commands with Alexa and Google Home. Is, is that right? How does that work? Yeah, we, we could be here all day discussing. Well, we don't want to be here subject. all day. No, we don't. And we promised everybody this would be maybe 15 minutes. I understand. You know, but can't do it. The. Uh, the smart home uh, technology is just rampant. What is current this morning will be su superseded this afternoon. It's happening that fast. And so we try to keep up with it as best we can, but let me just go over a couple of minor ways that you can control lighting. One is called a smart plug. Now, we have a smart plug sitting here on the table, and I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to see it. Maybe, Edie, if you could hold that. Can you grab that and hold that up a little bit? Sure. The smart plug is the white thing that's that, that just that little, move it in the middle a little more if you can. There you go. That white thing is the smart plug, and I can control that plug <coughs> through my phone. Okay, it, it's really kind of, uh, that light bulb is off now, now it's on. Okay, and it is, it is completely wireless, can be controlled wow. by the phone. I could be in South America and control that light from my phone. Wow. Okay. So would you use this then if you are away and to turn on lights at night or well, to make it look like your home? Is that? Yeah, there are a number of different ways that the, that you use this technology. One is with a physical light switch, a button on the phone like I just showed mm -hmm. you. A second one is you can set up a timer. Oh, that's a true. A third one is you can set up a motion detector. I have a storage area in my basement. And it seems like every time I'm going in the storage area, I'm carrying something. Mm -hmm. So what I did was take the light bulb out, or the, take the light switch out, and put in a motion sensor light switch. Now when I enter the room, the lights automatically go on. I have it set for 10 minutes, and after 10 minutes, it goes out. All so you better get back upstairs before, you, before the light goes no, out. No, no, what's interesting is as long as you keep moving, 
it stays on. Oh, okay. But after 10 minutes of sensing no motion. No motion, okay. We have a picture of that kind of plug, that, or that kind of light uh, switch that hmm. you can look does at. Does it look different from an, yeah, it does. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's certainly, you'd have to look at it to know that it's different. They have light switches that you can put up. Instead of putting the little um, plug on, Mm -hmm. Okay, the smart plug. You can put, replace your light switch so that all of the lights in your ceiling, for example, can be controlled. Right. Well, okay. that, that's really amazing when you think about it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it, it, again, my, my poor wife bears the brunt of most of my experimentation. And um, to turn the lights on and off or to dim them, some of the latest ones even change color, folks. I have a friend that's on the technology of the committee that at the start of an Eagles game, all the lights in his house turn green. Oh my gosh, really? Yes. He's an odd fellow. Uh, <laughs> Nobody I know, I hope. Yeah, I'm afraid you do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll he will remain here's, nameless. Here's another gadget that you can get. This is a light switch. Here's the switch, and here's a plug. So I can take this plug, plug it in anywhere I want, and this switch glues on the wall, okay, has a piece of double-faced tape on it. Okay. And you can turn the, whatever is plugged into here from the wall. Mm -hmm. This is particularly helpful in areas like, in my house, my basement was finished after the house was built. So there was no light switch upstairs to turn the lights on in the basement. Really annoying. Yeah. Inevitably. How did they miss that, I wonder? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I would like to chat with them about yeah, it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Anyway, by using this kind of technology, I was able to put in effect a three way switch, whereas I have a switch upstairs and a switch downstairs that both control the lights. So you didn't need an electrician? I did not, and I didn't have to do any wiring. No wiring, that's which great. Was, which was great. Yeah. Now, speaking of trying to install some of this, obviously with the light bulbs, it's pretty straightforward. But these, these different um, controls, the plug is, is easy. Right. Is there anything that we need some sort of a special person or electrician to, to yes. Uh, install? Yes. There are, <coughs> there are light switches that actually replace your switch in the wall. Okay. That are called smart light switches. And they can be controlled remotely. They, many of them you can have the lights dim if you wish. Um, and of course, if you can control them remotely, that means you can set up a timer, you can set up all kinds of triggers that make them turn on or off. My li <laughs> lights in my kitchen turn on when my wife's garage door goes up. Good idea. Now, I have done this, and I've told her that I did this so that I could come out and help her carry the packages in. But it's really a heads up to me in case I'm doing something I shouldn't be when she gets home. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um. <laughs> um, I guess uh, there's another problem that I have, and that is um, in December, I left my Christmas tree lights uh. up all overnight. I, I frequently go out and I leave my outdoor lights on all night. And uh, I'm wondering, are there some kind of smart technology solutions that I could use to, to take care of that problem? Well, Some of this that you've been talking about? The first thing you could consider is a religion change. <laughs> which was <one? laughs> No, that's not going to happen, okay, Doc. Okay, well, okay. Short of that, that's where the, the smart plug that I showed you earlier comes into play. Because you can take that plug, once it's programmed into your Wi-Fi, you can take that plug, put it any place in the house, and like I had that particular one control the candles in my windows. Okay. I can have a, uh, I had another one outside that controlled the lights around my front door. Mm -hmm. And again, they are all controlled by timers. By the way, there's something really cool with the timers. You can set the timer to come on at dusk. 
Okay. Not a particular time. So that if you had the light on your front door that you wanted to come over your front door that wanted to come on at dusk, this, the technology is so smart it knows when dusk is for that time of year. Hmm. You no longer have to make that uh, adjustment. There is one thing also that I would like to suggest, and this is so simple but so effective that a number of my neighbors have adopted it. A number of us take and leave our outside light bulbs on 24-7, whether it be over the front door, over the garage, some people over their deck, they leave them on all the time. Not only is that a tremendous waste of electricity, which can be cut down depending upon what kind of bulb you use. Right. But it also announces to the world that you may not be home. Because the theory is that if you're home, you turn your lights off. If your lights are on 24-7, there's no one there to turn them off. So I went and found a bulb, very similar to this one, mm -hmm. that has down in the corner here a photocell. Okay. So one nearly, merely takes this bulb, screws it into the light fixture. It will sense when it's light and when it's dark. So when it becomes dusk, the light bulb comes on. When the sun comes up in the morning, the light bulb comes off, turns off. That bulb was four dollars. Wow. Okay. And they come in the smaller sizes too that you could use on your outside light fixtures. Yes. Yes. And where would I where would I find something like this? Well, online I, I or do I? I bought mine online. Home Depot sells them. Okay. Um, I I bought them online and I I hit a sale and and normally. They don't like to sell you one because the shipping of shipping the, the shipping cost of sending one bulb is, is is high. So what I would suggest is you get in with a bunch of your neighbors and buy a half a dozen or a dozen of these sixty watt bulbs <coughs> with a photocell on them. Yeah. And go crazy plugging them into the neighbors. It sounds really like a good a plan. Neat thing. Well, Don, this has really been interesting and very very helpful. Thanks You're for welcome. coming to the studio today. If you have questions about technology, please, please write to deartechnologyabby at gmail.com. If you want to refer to this program in the future, these programs will be on the Hershey's Mill website, hersheysmill.org, on the Technology Committee page. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.